Welcome all you very, very wise women and all of you very wise men who are tuning into this summit. This is the Wise Woman's Way to Love, Sex, and Vitality Worldwide Summit. I'm your host, Willow Brown, bringing you a wealth of love and inspiration from this year's panel of fantastic and incredible speakers. Um, I'm just having so much fun just talking to my favorite teachers and authors and leaders and luminaries in the field of health and sexuality. And I just want to thank you all so much for being with us and being a part of this summit. It um, wouldn't be happening without all of you who have interest in this topic and um, bettering your life according to your health and your vitality. So our next speaker is such a deep and powerful and knowledgeable wise woman who speaks the importance of food, nutrition, and vitality. She and I share a passion for nutrition, um, the kind of nutrition that makes you feel amazing and on top of your life um, in, in both of your body and your mind. So no matter what you've been through with eating disorders or body image issues or digestive difficulties, our next conversation is going to provide you with invaluable tips, tools, and wisdom to make your eating habits um, one of both pleasure and benefit for your health. So this, accord, uh, this recording is available for 72 hours for free, and after that you can purchase the bonus package, which is an upgrade. Um, it's only $97, and it's packed full of so many incredible gifts. So I highly recommend that you pick that up. 10% of those purchases go to an organization called Women for Women International. They help women who have been through war and rape and genocide and just horrible uh, things that no woman should ever have to go through. They help them rebuild their lives. So I love giving back to this foundation. And as always, the conversation between you, our listeners, and our speakers is happening over on the Facebook group page. So head over there and just type in Wise Woman's Way to Love, Sex, and Vitality to your search bar, and I will add you if you're not already part of our conversation. And I'm so excited. I'm just thrilled to be introducing you to our next speaker and to be having this conversation with Miss Talia Lutzker. Talia is a certified Ayurvedic practitioner, body worker, professional chef, and author of three Ayurvedic cookbooks. She's the founder of Talia's Kitchen, an Ayurvedic and Nutrition Center catering company in Santa Cruz, California. Talia has been, dedi- has been a dedicated yoga practitioner for over 23 years and has studied Ayurvedic aromatherapy and essential oils since 2003. Talia loves to teach Ayurvedic nutrition and body care and is committed to empowering women to take charge of their own health naturally. Uh, These days, Talia teaches Ayurvedic nutrition, self-care, and yoga to thousands of people through online classes, private consultations, and her Ayurvedic cleanse program, as well as her year-long program, Nourishment School. So you can find Talia on Grokker, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook, and you can learn more about her and how Ayurvedic self-care can change your life at www.taliaskitchen.com. So welcome, Talia. I'm so thrilled to be here with you today. Thank you, Willow. I am so thrilled to be here, too. Awesome. Yay. Um, So the title of our talk today is Ayurvedic Wisdom for Divine Feminine Vitality. So I know that you have a wealth of information on this topic. And I'm wondering if we could just start by hearing a little bit about your personal journey to discovering Ayurvedic medicine. I know you've been doing this for a very long time, probably over two decades. Um, but can you remember, like, one of the very first times that you really saw the power of this medicine in your own life or in a, a patient's or a client's life? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, well, I found I found out about Ayurveda when I went to become a yoga teacher in 2001. So it hasn't quite been two decades, more like 15, 15 years. Almost 15 there. Years. <laughs> Almost there soon. <laughs> um, 
And, you know, we learned about it in the yoga teacher training, but I didn't really resonate with it, partly because when I took the written test where it's supposed to help you evaluate what is your core constitution or your dosha, I got it wrong. So when I stood mm-hmm. up with the group of people who, like, came up with the same conclusion of their body type, I was really confused. And I had had an, a pretty severe eating disorder when I was in college. So it was also just like, I was like, oh, my God, this is triggering. <laughs> I don't think this is for me. Um, but in that same yoga teacher training, I woke up one morning covered in psoriasis and um, really like pretty much from head to toe. And it was the the quintessential um, wounded healer kind of journey that it happened to me there when I was becoming a yoga teacher. And I sought out holistic health care to help me heal my skin. And when I met my Ayurvedic practitioner, she was at a health and harmony fair in Santa Rosa, California, doing um, pulse readings for a dollar a minute. And I was convinced I had candida. So I went up to her and I was, I was kind of panicked, you know, but she was mm-hmm. just so, she just had this vibe of, she was so awesome. She's like, let me look at your tongue. She's like, okay, you don't have candida, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I want, you know, come see me. And um, when she read my pulse and she, from my pulse was able to discern what my core constitution was. And then she explained it to me. I mean, it literally, the, I remember the moment so clearly. I'll never forget it. It was like mm-hmm. having somebody shine a light into the center of my being of just like, this explains everything. This explains my emotional um, neuroses and my imbalances, all of the physical imbalances that I was dealing with my whole life, it was like became so clear in this one reading for me. And when she put me on an Ayurvedic nutrition program that was specifically not only for my dosha, my core constitution, but also for the inflammation and the itchiness and, um, you know, all the, everything that was associated with the psoriasis, I mean, it was so remarkable i my skin just started healing so quickly and i felt amazing i lost i'd always thought felt like i was like 10 pounds overweight like not in a in a big major way but just it always felt like it was there and it literally fell off like i didn't Mm. it just was gone um and um pretty much since i've been practicing Ayurveda for myself, it, 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 you know, I've gone through different phases because this has been a long time, a long journey for me now, but pretty much I've stayed at my ideal body weight the whole time and had so much more emotional and mental balance. My period became regular where I hardly, I never knew when I was going to get it before then. I mean, everything, it affected Mm -hmm. everything, you know, yeah. So anyway, I could go on. But I won't. Yeah. Well, I mean, God, just what a remarkable story. I mean, it's, you're such a testament to the medicine itself. You you really got to to live it, and um, and so I'm sure you've helped thousands of people go through the same transformation at this point. Yeah. I mean, Ayurveda is. I was thinking about it this morning. You know, the translation of the the Sanskrit for Ayurveda is science of life. And it it is, and you know, people refer to it as a lifestyle program or a lifestyle science. And it's just so true. If you're you, for it to work for you, you have to live it. And it doesn't mean you have to live it twenty four seven. But it is about persistence and consistency when you want to see results. And I think that's true with practically everything in natural medicine. You know, mm-hmm. like you, you've got to. It's not just ta- it's, you're not just taking a pill to fix something. You're really altering your energy on so many levels. So, um, you know, I just think you have to really embrace it. And and what's cool about it is, and I'm going to share some really cool stuff in this realm um, with you today. Is you know you don't have you could just embrace a couple of things and like bring just a couple of really core practices that 
feed you and nourish you in such a profound way that you could get massive change just from doing a couple of practices. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it makes you inspired, makes you feel inspired and empowered. So then it's just natural that you're like, cool, now I'm going to take on something else because these first couple practices have just become a part of who I am and how I care for myself. So Mm -hmm. it just kind of grows exponentially in for the people who want to take it on. And very naturally, very organically, people get to, you know, take on a little bit at a time until they're comfortable with that to the point where then they can take on a little bit more. And pretty soon they're living the Ayurvedic lifestyle. Yeah. That's so fun. Um, Talia, can you can you explain to us the doshas and what what's a dosha? And maybe for those of us who are who are listening and tuning in, um, how might they like identify with you know which dosha they are? Okay, so I'm actually the, um, I'm offering a free gift to your peeps to everyone okay. that's listening to this, um, and it's the first couple chapters from. Um, one of my cookbooks, the Ayurvedic Vegan Kitchen. And so everyone who gets that free gift, um, they'll actually get a, a, a chapter about the doshas, which will be really helpful. But the basic principle about the doshas and how, um, you know, how you can start identifying yourself as being one or the other most predominantly mm-hmm. is it, the, the three doshas are broken up into um, – it's basically taking the five elements, ether, air, fire, water, earth, and breaking it down into these three categories of vata, pitta, and kapha. Those are, that's like the language of Ayurveda is just knowing how to speak these doshas. So when you're talking about the vata dosha, which is um, comprised of air and ether, I think it's both yours and my primary constitution, Willow. I think so. Mm-hmm. Is that yours? Yeah, definitely, yeah. <laughs> Very much. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh-huh. You know, you start to notice. You start to notice what your predominance your predominance is based on which qualities of the elements you tend to embody in positive and not so positive light. So, with Vata, for example, you know, really positive characteristics are of Vata is that they're energetic. They're talkative, they're adaptable, they're organized. Um, but the challenges that Vata can face is anxiety, indecision, fear in all different realms, like kind of not being able to be very grounded or focused. There's a, a, a strong tendency to feel scattered or just to be all over the place. Like, you know, I notice sometimes when I have – give myself like an administrative day in my business. Oh, oh, sometimes I'm, I'll find myself like starting, you know, seven projects and I just, they're all open, you know, and I'm going <laughs> from one to the other for like two hours. I, and I, I'm pretty good with my follow through at this point because I'm, because I'm so aware of my tendency, but, you know, starting a bunch of projects and then usually Vata won't finish them because they're just distracted and on to the next thing. Um, but they're also really spiritual, artistic, intuitive. And in the body, this is someone who tends to be cold, dry, light, possibly very thin. And it doesn't mean that you're thin necessarily like, you know, someone looks at you and like, oh, she's so skinny. Or it, it could be that you have thin skin, like you're so sensitive. Mm-hmm. And people are like, geez, you know, like that person's sensitive. Sensitive mm-hmm. to other people like the um, like highly sensitive person kind of thing, but also mm-hmm. sensitive to light or heat or um, cold or sound, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then is this, am I, is that cool? Is that enough, you think, for Vata? Yeah, yeah, Vata. I okay. think that explains okay. very well. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then Pitta. <laughs> Pitta is comprised of fire and water. And Pitta, so Pitta being fire, it's really all about breaking things down and turning them into liquid. That is Pitta's job. So when mm. I say fire and water, usually the way we'll experience water when it comes to Pitta is more like oiliness. 
So somebody mm-hmm. who needs to shower every day because if they don't, their hair will be like greasy and oily. That's, I'm not saying that person is Pitta, but that could be a Pitta um, mm-hmm. quality. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, cystic acne is a, a Pitta, a Pitta issue. Um, other things that are, uh, you know, earwax, <laughs> for example, is like, mm-hmm. that's the, that's the residue that's created from, you know, muscle. So that's a pitta, uh, a pitta excrement. Um, people who are pitta predominant are focused, driven, confident, direct. They're usually really aware. Um, it doesn't mean that they're like super ethical, but they're definitely mm. like they're pretty. They're really smart, and mm-hmm. they're very solar. Like they have mm. solar energy. Um, mm. So. On a physical level, they'll get really they'll get heated up very easily. They'll be hot, um, steamy. Um, they could be like, you know, have issues where like things are spreading, like rashes that spread. So even though I'm not pitta predominant, when I had that psoriasis um, spread all over my body, I mean that was clearly a pitta symptom or a pitta mm. issue that I was dealing with. Um, They've got really easy digestion and elimination. They poo all day or at least a couple times a day. Um, and they're visionaries. They're planners. They're leaders. They're producers. Um, you know, they're definitely like the, the um, in many ways, the movers and shakers of the world. Mm-hmm. And then kapha is water and earth, made from water and earth. So, you know, of all the ones I've mentioned so far, water and earth are the first two elements that, number one, really hold a lot of weight, like they're heavy. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. it's also the symbol the symbol of nourishment is kapha. So if you don't have enough kapha, dosha, in your body, like, you know, women who reject their kapha, which is what I was doing when I had an eating disorder in my 20s, you know, mm-hmm. it's like, you'll get really thin or you'll, you'll, you're just rejecting that it's okay to have some extra cushion and some juiciness and some curves. Mm-hmm. Like I love that, you know, in the wise woman teachings that you offer, you know, you're, you're really letting women embody that, those parts about themselves. It's so important because that is your stability. It's your deep mm-hmm. nourishment. It's your juiciness. It's your vitality you know, Ayurvedic wisdom for divine feminine vitality, embrace your kapha. <laughs> it's like, mm. uh, say it in one sentence. Um, yeah. But so, someone might um, identify themselves as kapha um, if they just really can see that as a person, they're really stable. Um, they're like provider energy. So mother, father, supporter, um they have really sound sleep. Thick, lustrous hair is usually a quality of kapha. You know, having some ex- possibly some extra weight. Um, definitely strong bones, strong teeth. Um, you know, a thicker skin. Although emotionally, kaphas are quite sensitive as as well as vatas. Um, mm. But they're just real steady, grounded, nurturing, mm. forgiving people. Mm. I love it. I love it. So, so each person basically has all three doshas within them, but they have one that they're more predominant, one that they might tend toward an imbalance with. However, it, like the example you gave of yourself, you could be a vata but still have an imbalance in your pitta. Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And not everybody has a really obvious, strong predominant. There are people mm-hmm. who are more tridoshic where it's okay. tried meaning, you know, three. And, mm-hmm. and they, you know, they'll have a harder time identifying their dosha because they don't have a really specific or obvious predominance. And then there's mm-hmm. also, it's pretty common because what vata and pitta share in common is lightness, is when mm-hmm. somebody has a vata pitta or a pitta vata predominance, they might fluctuate quite a bit where, you know, they're like, I'm not sure, it's like, of the time, I feel like I'm vata. 50% of the time, I feel like I'm pitta. 
And, you know, when I read that person's pulse, I'll be like, yeah, because you are. Mm. <laughs> Basically, that's yeah. where your pulse is at. It's like you fluctuate. So, yeah. um, but most people have a predominance. I would say most, like 80%, okay. 70 or okay. 80% of the population that I've met. Uh-huh. Yeah, definitely. I think that that's that's what I see, too. Like, when I'm just, I, I look for it a lot when I'm in yoga class because I have time to, like, look at people in the class. And I just like to look at people's just constitution and body type, skin color, hair color, kind of all that stuff to to just, um, I don't know, just get an idea about people. You can really tell a lot by a person just by um, just by looking at them. And then once you get to get to know them and know their more emotional um, composition, uh, you can kind of, you know, identify that a little bit more. Um, yeah, so for I think those, that's when you really get to know it. I do. Yeah, when, when you, you talk I mean, to someone. Well, when you see their emotional, their emotional mm. energetics and the way that they mm. handle stress, that's when you see, like, oh, you know, because Pitta will, could get so flared, but Kapha mm. could avoid, right? Kapha could be like, I'm a river. I'm just going to go around this obstacle, <laughs> you know? Uh, I see. Um, or, 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 like, just kind of get weepy and like, oh, poor me, you know? Uh, and okay. then, uh huh. Yeah. Right, there's all different instead ways Instead of a flare-up. Yeah, interesting. Instead of a flare-up um, so, or instead of getting anxious and, you know, uh-huh. freaking out, which is would be, like vata. could be vata, yeah. Okay, yeah. So for for those who are like, oh, yeah, they're listening in and they're like, yes, I'm probably one of that, I'm that type, you know, I'm a pitta or what have you. Um, how, yeah. Like what kind of things, like when they're able to take care of this, uh, aspect of themselves and when they're able to live in balance with their dosha, with their constitutional type, um, what kind of things do you see that are possible for them in their lives? Oh, that's really interesting. What an interesting question. Um, okay. Well, so Vata being so light and cold and um, scattered I see Vata being able to be in their power, like really grounded in their body, um, ob- like having way less, um, way less symptoms of emotional imbalance. Um, I think they're healthier sexually when they're really, um, you know, grounded. And I mean, everyone needs to be grounded and juiced up to be Mm -hmm. present and to have um, divine feminine vitality. You have to have those elements. So it really, I think it really helps. I'm speaking mostly to women at this moment, but it would, it's true for men too. I mean, I think it really helps them to like tap into their root, you know, like feel their root because they might not have ever felt their root before, their root chakra, the root of their tailbone, like really being aware of that they can make their bones heavy in a shavasana or a seated meditation, um, you know, and, and then there's more heart connection just within. So I see for Vata, you know, definitely a way, um, a much higher level of self-love and self-care because mm. they're not like running away from, you know, pain or discomfort, it's like they can go in it and actually do something about it. Um, mm, for, pit, for, for Pitta, um, you know, they're, generally speaking, Pitta's remedy is to chill out and um, relax, you know. And, and, and some Pittas really are quite good at this naturally, actually. But... Um, but they usually have this real strong inner striver, as my yoga teacher says, like a really strong inner striver. (laughs) And so Mm -hmm. when Pitta is using Ayurved, you know, they often have quite a a few, like, uncomfortable symptoms as well. Like it could be acid reflux or sharp pain um, in, you know, different ways, Um, just feeling overheated, which is a real issue in, you know, perimenopause and menopause if someone can't control their heat. Um, So 
I think that they're able to find softness around what normally are their edges, and that makes them more sensitive and more available to other people. So, again, I think that the prize is presence and heart connection. Um, and also um, more ability, like a, 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 you know how I said earlier that they're usually really aware. So because they're naturally so focused, I think that they can take that focus and direct their energy more towards what they really want in their life like love and forgiveness and safety and um, inclusion. So, you know, I think it really opens their heart when, when, they, mm. when they get um, that chill out factor brought in on a deep level. And then Kafa, I mean, Kafa's, you know, Kafa's already sweet. That's, that's, Basically, the definition of sweet in Ayurveda is kapha, earth and water. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's not that they need to find their sweetness per se, but that they may need to really move blocks that are in their way from um, being able to be in a flow in their life and um, being able to just take responsibility for their feelings um, so that they're not sitting in the woe is me, the poor me, like, which just keeps them more stuck. Um, but they're able to, like, really turn the compassion that they have for others towards themselves. So, because Kafa is really good at taking care of everybody else. They have so much mm-hmm. natural endurance and caretaking um, tendencies. So when they turn that around and... Um, give that to themselves, it is serious miracle. Like, wow. I have seen some real, real miracles in the, the women and the men who have been able to, like, you know, embrace the kapha, but, but also yeah. change their focus of how they use their kapha. Uh huh. Instead of putting it outward to everyone else, putting it inward and really mothering themselves yeah and it's not either or it's doing both because they get so much from Mm -hmm. giving to others they need to still be able to do that but they've got it you know they've got to basically learn um learn what their energetic i I hate to use the word limitation but i mean we don't have i mean we are all going to die we don't have unlimited energy so um on this plane anyway (laughs) so Mm -hmm. you know they really do have to figure out like okay so I can take care of you know this this and this today but if I have to stop there in order to still have time energy and spaciousness to turn the attention inward to myself Uh, mm -hmm. so it's that balance that daily moment to moment I mean and it's a choice that they that everyone what no matter what your dosha is it's a choice that you make choice Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it can be hard. It can be like, especially if you're really, if you're really far down a path of like, I'm sorry, kapha imbalance. I mean, you could be quite heavy, really quite Mm -hmm. depressed. It can be super challenging to, it's really getting over that initial hurdle of, you know what, I accept myself and I love myself. This is where EFT, I think, is so helpful, Um, that Mm -hmm. emotional freedom technique of tapping like, mm-hmm. I'm not an expert in it by any means, but um, I've, um, in nourishment school, it's one of our kind of core practices is we tap on the, the heart and the thymus gland, which is your gland of innate knowing. Um, um, basically, a, like, hold everything that you've ever tasted, smelled, seen, experienced, any pathogen that you've dealt with, it's all stored in your thymus gland. And you know, so just tapping there can do so much to help kapha come into that, like, even though I let myself get this far out of balance, I unconditionally love and accept myself. And in tapping, mm. you know, they're, they are creating a little bit of lymphatic flow, which mm-hmm. is basically what they've got to get in flow to, um, you know, 
move that juicy, healthy, vital ogis around their body so it gets everywhere and, like, flushes the organs, doesn't just clog them up. Yeah, oh, I love it. I'm having such a, like, visceral experience of, of the kapha inside of me as you're speaking to it. And I, I oh. love that you, what you said earlier in this call, you said, you know, if there's one thing for, um, for feminine vitality, according to our Vedic wisdom, is to really embrace that kapha. Yeah, everyone needs it. Everyone mm-hmm. needs it. You need, you can't, you can't live without it. And you I can't be, I don't think you can be blissful or calm or happy without it. Mm. Okay, then. So embracing okay. our kapha. Let's do it, ladies. And men <laughs> who are tuning in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so embracing our kapha, like what would you, is there any, like one specific sort of, um, lifestyle shift you would recommend for that or maybe an herb or some kind of diet thing shift that you would point to? Yes. (laughs) I'm like, I have 20. (laughs) I know. I bet you do. (laughs) You could give us three. How about that? (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I have three. These are three. I'm just choosing three. Okay, good. Okay. For So one, there's an... There are two, I call them sisters, but really they're brothers and sister. It's a brother and a sister. Um, Ayurvedic herbs called ashwagandha and shatavari. Mm-hmm. Now, I know that you know, I know you're familiar with ashwagandha because you give it to me in one of the formulas that I get from mm-hmm. you, Willow. Um, yeah. But for our listeners, both of these herbs, ashwagandha and shatavari, are deep, restorative, tonifying um, adaptogen herbs. So they strengthen immunity, they strengthen vitality, and it's a tonic. So it is something that you take regularly every day to strengthen your vitality. It doesn't mean, I think there's really a, a kind of a misconception, like when people talk about maca, for example, like, oh, if I take maca, I will like feel really sexual. That's actually not, that's not accurate in my interpretation and this is just all my opinion um Mm -hmm. but but maca is another adaptogen like ashwagandha where the reason why it gives you good good energy for sex is it's nourishing your adrenals if your adrenals are taxed which the, the adrenals are the little glands that sit right on top of the kidneys which are your the battery packs of your body if your kidneys and your adrenals are tax because you have been pushing too hard and for too long and you don't know when to stop and you don't have enough vital nutrition and kind of kapha, you know, that vital kapha, ogis, vital fluid coming in on a daily basis, you will run out of gas and therefore you will not feel sexual or vital in your, you know, romantic or whatever sexual relationships. So Mm -hmm. going to these adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha and I guess actually shatavari, they're both roots. Um, I don't know, actually, now that I'm saying it, if shatavari is considered an adaptogen specifically, but ashwagandha definitely is. And Mm -hmm. the difference between the two of them is ashwagandha is warming. So it's really great for people who are vata predominant, possibly kapha predominant, um, but who tend to be cold or dry, ashwagandha is going to bring a lot of warmth. And it's often given to the elderly because it's so restorative when um, somebody's like in a de- debilitated state. You know, you would give ashwagandha to help like bring life force back to the tissues. And shatavari is cooling. So for someone who's pitta predominant or a woman who's in perimenopause or menopause, um, definitely shatavari. And shatavari is really re- revered as an herb for women, um, partly because, again, that cooling aspect is the yin feminine mm-hmm. aspect. And the ashwagandha, the warming aspect, is like that solar yang 
but they can, it doesn't matter. They're not really male, female specific. Mm. You just, you use the one that you, you need given, um, you know, how able you're, how able you are, um, wait, how, I can't say the sentence. You need to be able to identify if you're, if you're hot or cold. <laughs> right. Whatever you need, whatever you need it for. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I not sure. sure. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, if you're not sure, you could do like a teaspoon of each. Uh huh. You know, and just like make a blend. Check it out. Yeah, and see, and maybe see which one is feels more um, aligned with where you're at in the moment. Yeah, I've seen um, Shatavari. I I I've never heard anyone pronounce it that way. Shatavari. Oh, really? I always say Shatavari. Oh. But um, oh. I like this Shatavri pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. Um, I've never it can heard, definitely... heard it the way you say it. Oh, really? How funny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Shatavari is how I always learned it. Um, but mm. yeah, I've seen it. Cool women in, in menopause and perimenopause, I give it to women for that a lot. And the ashwagandha is just, I mean, one of my favorite herbs of all time. I've seen it change people's lives. So. Oh, my God. So incredible. And, you know, Shatavri really, I do feel that Shatavri is, I do feel like it is more feminine specific. I mean, on an intuitive level, I feel that Uh way. Um, And I feel like ashwagandha is more adrenal specific. But um, anyway, the best way to take these herbs is to buy them in powder. And um, Mm -hmm. I get them through, there's different Ayurvedic companies online you can buy them through. And also Mountain Rose Herbs, who I love that company. Um, you can get those powders through them. Um, and then the best vehicle for getting them into your system is to stir them into hot milk. Um, mm. So here's where we're bringing in that kapha element because, like I said, kapha mm. is sweet. Earth and water, dairy is sweet. Like every food has its own predominant dosha and taste. And so mm. da- whole milk dairy as a, like, going like I'm just kind of sweeping across the whole spectrum of it is kapha, kapha. even goat milk, which is more astringent. And so it's like better, it's going to be better for a kapha person to digest, easier for a kapha person to digest goat milk than it is cow's milk because it, because goat is more astringent and smaller sugar molecules, like easier to break Mm -hmm. down, but it's Mm -hmm. still sweet. It's still considered also sweet. But you could do this in almond milk, oat milk, hemp seed milk, like even what I just said, like almond milk for vata. No, sorry, oat milk or almond milk for vata, hemp seed milk for pitta, and um, almond or hemp or even like flax milk, you know, like you've seen flax seed milk and sunflower seed milk or quinoa Mm. milk. Um, mm. I have recipes for all these in my cookbook. Um, you mm. know, kapha could do all kinds of grain or seed milks. Um, and you just stir in the, the herb into the hot milk and so wonderful to do before bed, mm. like as a dessert. And I'll often yeah. add um, saffron and cardamom. And um, if I need to cool down, then I would add a little maple syrup, like if I wanted it to be sweet. So yummy. Ooh, I love that. It sounds so good. Yeah. Bring me a cup. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, I will. I will. <laughs> and, um, you know, this is also a, a really great thing to do after you've been intimate and you have excreted fluid. This would be like ah. a way to replenish and something so sweet that you could do with your partner, like take turns making each uh-huh. other the, the um, shatavri or the ashwagandha milk. So sweet. Oh, I love that. That's beautiful. I'm going to do that for sure. Mm-hmm. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so number two, that was just one. Uh-huh. That was just one remedy. Number two okay. is deep rest. I mm. just cannot emphasize this enough. And and it's, and I'm going to be totally honest, like, you know, I am a very motivated, excited, energetic Vata Kapha. (laughs) (laughs) I have so much that I want to do in this world. I'm a yes person. So, you know, this is an edge for me 
um, but it's, I teach it because it's what I most want and need to learn for myself. Um, but deep rest, deep rest. And, and so that is meditation or legs up the wall with a bolster mm-hmm. underneath your sacrum or um, doing the kind of floor work yoga practice that's just super gentle, like opening up joints, letting your bones be heavy, like almost micro movements, um, craniosacral therapy, acupuncture, getting Ayurvedic massage, like scheduling in times for yourself where you are doing nothing but receiving earth element. Uh, physicality, like rest and letting your physicality. bones be heavy. Mm-hmm. Yep. So even in meditation, like, um, and again, this is just my opinion, you know, like, I mean, and everything works, it's whatever works for you, right? I mean, it, you have to do whatever works for you. But like, for me, it's not super restful to do counting meditation or, um, you know, like a mantra meditation. Like, I'm more just like opening up my ears and listening uh. to my breath and trying to hear like the pulse of my heartbeat. You know, uh-huh. like that for me is even such a subtle, it, it's such a subtle thing, like big deal if you meditate in one way or the other. But because if you're new to meditation, it's great that you just meditate even for uh-huh. five minutes. It is uh-huh. so, so, so good for you. So good for yeah. your, your heart and your mind and, and your body because the heart mind really rules ultimately. So deep breaths. And then um, the third practice is um, to support your lymphatic system by moving it and, and moving it with, um, you know, introducing this kapha idea of like we're talking about embracing your kapha by rubbing oil all over your body, excuse me, mm-hmm. from your feet to your heart and from your hands to your heart. In Ayurveda, we call this Abhyanga, A-B-H-Y-A-N-G-A. And usually, um, you know what, I'm actually, I actually want to offer something else to your listeners because I would love to just like gift this, uh, an Abhyanga recipe to everyone who's listening. Um, Perfect. So if you, if you want this, you have to email me. So you have to send me an email to info at taliaskitchen.com and in the subject line say um, something about, you know, the wise woman, woman's way or, you know, Mm -hmm. I need help with my kapha or (laughs) whatever (laughs) or I'll be on in the subject line. But I will will email you this recipe, a a recipe for abhyanga that is um, specific for nourishing kidneys and adrenals and the deep rest and everything else that we're talking about. But, you know, when you, that lymph, your, your lymph is, another word for lymph is lasika, which means to glisten. It is, mm-hmm. it really is like your life sap. It is your immunity. And when the immune system is taxed, like you're, you don't have enough cough of flow in your vital fluids, your body can't fight for you. It can't protect you. Like it really struggles and it's going to show up in, it can show up in so many different ways. So just by moving the lymphatic system and nourishing it by feeding it with some really just beautiful oil, um, it can just make such a huge difference. And it's a practice that can really take you right into deep rest. So a mm. lot of times I'll, you know, I'll, really heat up the room, I'll, you know, get naked, put a towel down on the floor, I heat up my Abhyanga oil, and I go from my feet to my heart, my hands to my heart, I just get so oily. You can pour the oil into your yoni. I mean, it's Mm. so nourishing. You can get it all over your scalp. And I'll just, like, keep rubbing the oil in for, like, 20 minutes. And, um, you know, it just feels so good. And then I'll just, like, lay there for a little while, take a bath, Mm -hmm. take a hot shower, it is just life-changing, in my opinion. 
So, Talk about um, sacred sensuality. I mean, what a yeah. awesome practice of just like yeah. getting into the sensation of your own skin and the warm oil and nourishing yourself and really giving back to yourself. And I just think like taking, you know, taking that time and space for yourself, oil aside is powerful, you know, but then you add the Abhyanga practice in and I mean, that is sacred time for you to replenish. And it's also, this will add years to your life. Yeah. I mean, certainly, certainly will just have you feeling more juicy and available in your day-to-day life and uh, to me it's also like a, a real practice of you know you're touching yourself like it's self-acceptance mm-hmm. you know like yeah. real radical self-care yeah so I yeah. love it oh thank you for that what a what a beautiful practice I can't wait to put my abhyanga oil into oh into me practice. too I can't wait <laughs> Um, Talia, do you, I mean, gosh, you've given us so much wisdom today. I'm wondering if you have any, maybe like little meditation you want to share to kind of close us out, or maybe you have like some other closing wisdom that you want to share. Let's see. Um, I think I'll choose the closing wisdom partially because I've got a, um, get moving here myself but okay. um my closing wisdom is when you're having a hard time in any way shape or form put your hand on your heart close your eyes and just however you can just see if you can find some compassion for how you're mm-hmm. feeling Mm. and just yeah. you know take like two minutes to just be like wow I, I really hear that you you know wow I really feel sad I really feel angry wow I have so much compassion for myself that this is how I feel mm. yeah very powerful mm, Thank you so much for that wisdom. Yeah, very simple, very powerful. I mean, the most simple practices can just be the most powerful and exactly what you need and very available, which is what's wonderful about them. Thank you for that. Compassion will take you you through those hard times for sure. Yeah. So um, Talia has offered us a couple of really awesome gifts the Abhyanga oil, which you can email her to receive, and that's info at taliaskitchen.com, correct? Yes. Okay. And then otherwise, you can find her at www.taliaskitchen.com, and she is incredible. I love this woman. She is just a wealth of inspiration and information. She is my Ayurvedic practitioner, so... I love her, and I um, I would love for you all to connect with her as well. For those of you who have any questions about Ayurveda or about anything that you that's come up for you from this interview, you can ask over on the Facebook group page, and we'll be over there chiming in. And um, and then if you want to upgrade to receive the bonus package with a million wonderful gifts that are just life-changing and fully inspiring, I highly recommend. Um, you can upgrade on yinwellness.com. Just go to the 2017 Telesummit tab and upgrade there. And meanwhile, just sending you all so much love and so much light and just balance in the choices that you make for yourself. Again, Talia, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you so much, Willow. I love you so much. Oh, I love you too.